Hi, my name is Lydia Sewell and I'm a professional violinist here to give a digital webinar on how to practice two common pieces in the violin repertoire. First piece we're going to talk about is Bach's Minuet No. 2 in G major. Second piece is the Ackley Violin Concerto. Let's start with the first piece, Minuet in G major No. 2. This is a common piece in the Suzuki book repertoire as well as other curriculum. We're going to talk today about how to practice string crossings, articulation, and musicality. So, the first issue with this piece is usually the string crossings. One thing we have to do is to make sure that our bow is in the right plane. And what I mean by that is this. See how the bow moves on different planes? One easy practicing technique that you can clean this up is by practicing open strings. Watch this, do that five times and then put the left hand back in. This helps with coordination and makes the left hand sound cleaner. Wonderful, now that we've talked about that, let's talk about left hand articulation. How do we get those G's to sound staccato in a song-like setting, such as a minuet? One reason, one way, is to start from the string. We never want to start off the string when we're dealing with a staccato stroke, unless it's flying spiccato. Notice I didn't go. You can't hear very well. We have to start from the string if we want a clear articulation. Wonderful. Now let's move on to the Akele Violin Concerto. We're going to deal with that first line. So, it's written piano. I didn't actually start piano, oops. But it's very difficult to start a piece with a pianissimo stroke. The first thing we have to think about when we're practicing is where we're going to start. I would say the best place to start is somewhere in the lower half and make sure that you save your bow. Otherwise, this is what's going to happen. You're gonna run out of bow for those last notes, which are the most important because there's a crescendo. So. How do we deal with that? First thing is we save the bow. Intense vibrato maybe? Then we speed up. By doing that, we will help the crescendo and it'll help us physically. That also deals with string crossings, not unlike the minuet. Now, how are we going to practice that? Similar to the way we did the minuet except this time we're going to airplay with our left hand, a technique that I use a lot when I'm learning new repertoire. I try to emulate the rhythm. And sometimes I pretend to put my fingers down. When I put the fingers back, just like I did now, it sounds a little cleaner than it did when I started. The next point is the left hand. We've talked about the bow arm, let's talk about the left hand. How do you make sure that C is not going to be sharp? That's common in this piece. It's very easy to go instead of. So one way we do that is we have to make sure that we move the elbow to the left, especially with string crossings. Similar to how the bow starts on the G string and we move in different planes, 
Same thing goes for the left hand and the elbow. The elbow starts here in maybe G position, and as it goes and ascends strings, we move the elbow ever so slightly to the left. So the general motion for both hands is something that goes like this, kind of like a swing. Once you figure that out, it helps the articulation a lot. Now that we've talked about bow and the physical aspects of playing, let's talk about how to shift. That's a very common problem in beginning repertoire as well as intermediate levels. So there are several different ways you can shift. First way is to shift from the old note, the old finger, to the old finger. You can also shift from an old finger to a new finger. And finally, the way I prefer is when you actually figure out what position you're starting in and what position you're going to. Let's talk about the first way. If I decided to shift from first position to fifth position on the, on the, um, on the violin with the third finger, this is how it would sound. This is kind of common in Russian school of playing, where we slide into that note, kind of nice juicy. But you might not want that way. So what are some other options? Well, we could try old finger to a new finger. That also is kind of nice and clean. The third way, again, which is the way that's most effective, is to actually place sometimes the first finger ahead of the other fingers, like this. This ensures that I know I'm going to hit the note and that I'm not guessing and just hoping that I'm going to make it to that high note. One way we can practice that again is to just do this. Outline the hand position. Once you've done that several times, I usually say 10 times to figure out a shift then I will move on and take out that extra note. <laughs> That's what we have now. Now that note is nice and tuned. So, that's kind of what we've talked about today. With the minuet, we talked about open strings to cross. We talked about how to get a clear staccato articulation and in the Akali Violin Concerto, we talked about starting soft and piano, gradually ascending by using speed of the bow arm to accomplish this. We talked about string crossings, starting from here, and then using your arm to leverage to go a little bit faster. And then we talked about shifting. How do you shift? The three different types. Hopefully this has been educational, and I look forward to seeing you all soon.